But three weeks from Thursday, there will be a placing of the Jacksonville Jaguars on the clock in Las Vegas, Nevada for the first ever Las Vegas centric draft. Las Vegas hosted draft, the NFL draft. I'll be there for NFL Network and one of the best in the business looking at tape, looking at film and evaluating from NFL film senior producer Greg Cosell here back on the Rich Eisen Show. How you doing, Greg? Rich, how are you? I am great. I can't wait. I'm very excited. Look, I, and I know that people are like, well, quarterbacks aren't atop the draft, so on and so forth. And uh, But uh, there are some big-time players. Who's the best player in the draft that you see, uh, you oh. think? <laughs> what do you got for me? I'm, I'm not good at that stuff, Rich. Um, I think you could make a case for, uh, in this particular draft, um, I think Ahmad Gardner probably fits into that conversation, um, or I guess we should say Sauce Gardner. Yes, please. sir. Sauce. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I particularly like Evan Neal as as the best left tackle prospect. Maybe he fits into that category. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think Aiden Hutchinson will be a really good player. I don't know if he's a special player. Um, so yeah, that's it's. That's a hard question. Oh. I don't. I don't do a board, so I don't think of it in those terms. No, understood. I, I get you. Um, I guess then. I guess safest and things of that nature are the words that that are used. But it's all an evaluation when it's said and done. What is your evaluation of Kayvon Thibodeau, Greg Cosell? Um, I think Thibodeau is a good prospect. I don't think he's special. The thing that would would concern might be too strong a word, but when I think of pass rushers, normally I think that one trait I would like to see really outstanding pass rushers have is the ability to, as we say, clear the arc and then flatten and close to the quarterback. He's a little tight-hipped, and he struggles at times to kind of flatten once he once the attacks uh, the outside edge of, of offensive tackles. So he, in, ver- in many ways, Rich, he reminded me of a 20 pounds lighter Jadavian Clowney. And obviously Clowney came out as the consensus number one pick, and Clowney will now be likely with his fifth team by the age of 28. And the reason that's the case is because he's not a premium edge pass rusher, because premium edge pass rushers are not with their fifth team by the time they're the age of 28, because it's such an important position in the NFL. So Thibodeau reminded me a little bit of Clowney with his traits and his skill set and just that, that ability to bend and be flexible when you attack the high side of offensive tackles. He just did not flatten the way you'd like someone to when you think of the Von Millers of the world, those guys who are truly special edge rushers. So when you, you look at the Jaguars and all the moves that they've made in free agency um, and all the moves that they've made since the uh, beginning uh, uh, of the – the uh, non-playing season, as we call it in the NFL, you you, you can basically say they're going to go with a, an edge rusher. They're going to go with a, a pass rusher first overall. And there's Trayvon Walker in the mix as well. Who would you counsel, based on your evaluation, Jacksonville to choose at that spot? What do you think? Wow. I mean, you know, I my opinion on that based on film study and that's yes. all I do so yes. I don't get to meet these players. I know I'm sure Aiden Hutchinson is a terrific kid um and I think he'll be a good pro. The player and I doubt he will be the number 1 pick in the draft, but the player who I think of this particular group of pass rushers that in 2 or 3 4 years we could be talking about as the best of the group is Jermaine Johnson from Florida State. Uh now I doubt he'll be the number 1 pick in the draft, but I think that his combination of traits and his skill set are such that I could easily see him being the best pass rusher of the group uh when as time goes by. Now Hutchinson is a very complete player. Uh, I think he's a really good prospect. He's he's not a bendy, flexible player. Um, he uses his hands really well. He's got short area explosiveness. Um, he obviously plays with tremendous competitiveness all the time. Um, but um, I, I think Jermaine Johnson, as we go further down the road, will be arguably the best pass rusher of this group. Well, up the turnpike from where you uh, you work, sir, I mean, I know you don't traffic in the world of mock drafts, but so many mock drafts have Jermaine oh. Johnson winding up with the Giants, and Giants <laughs> fans are freaking out right now over that possibility. They're freaking out in a good way or a bad well, way? Well, I hope it's a good way because the kid lit it up at the Combine, and I've heard nothing but great things about him. What do you see on, on film that makes you say what you just said, Greg? Well, 
first of all, I, I love the way he's built. He's kind of long. He's lean. He's sinewy. He really looks athletic, and he plays that way. Um, I think that he plays with power that sometimes belies his his wiry frame, but there's a power element to his game, both as a run defender and pass rusher. He's naturally quick. There's just a quickness to his movement. I thought he used his hands effectively. Um, I wouldn't say he's he's a, a natural bender off the edge in a in a strict sense, but he can bend. Um, and I think that he's only scratching the surface of his ability to rush the quarterback. So I, I think that he's a guy you can line up on the edge. I think you can move him around your front, use him in what we call a joker, where he stands up and moves around, and you look for matchups with him. Um, and he's got excellent closing burst and speed. So I really liked his tape a lot. He had some really dominant snaps in the run game versus North Carolina State left tackle Ike Ikwanu, which is um, – Pretty surprising, given Equanu is just a, a man amongst boys when it comes to the run game. Greg, Greg Cosell here on the Rich Eisen Show. He's used the word matchup a few times, and why not? He's the EP and analyst on NFL Matchup with Matt Bowen and Sal Powell, senior producer of NFL Films for 42 years and counting right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Your evaluation of the quarterback class is what, Greg Cosell? Uh, I would probably put Kenny Pickett at the top of that list. Um, I think that he's just a very efficient ball distributor. Uh, I think that he has better mobility than people give him credit for. You know, to me, it's, if you reduce the quarterback position, and there's so many variables, Rich, as you know, and you, we could have this conversation for three hours, um, but ultimately it's it's to make the right kind of throw to the right receiver at the right time. And I think that Kenny Pickett does that extremely well. I think he's well-schooled in the kinds of pass game concepts that – he, he needs to know to be an NFL quarterback because Mark Whipple was his offensive coordinator and Mark Whipple has NFL experience. So you can see on tape that he's familiar with those concepts and combinations. Um, so to me, he's the best. I hear, I hear a lot about he doesn't have a special trait. Um, I understand what people mean by that, but no one is suggesting he's Josh Allen. You know, the, the point is, is can he be an efficient quarterback who can execute your offense snap after snap after snap and make the occasional improvisational play with his legs he can be that guy and i think he's prepared to play essentially right now what what about uh, the rest of the group walk me through who else you um, think has i think it? it'll be in the eye of the beholder you know it's funny if you talk to coaches and ask them to give you a list of quarterback traits that they view as important um what in some ways would be non-negotiables, obviously the main trade would be ball location and ball placement because you theoretically could do everything right as a quarterback, Rich, but if you can't throw the ball where you want to, then you essentially have nothing. And I think quarterback traits start with so many things that people don't talk about. It starts with fundamentals, mechanics, repetitive mechanics. You think of someone like Tom Brady who, who did not make plays outside the structure of the offense but his repetitive mechanics, every single snap, it was exactly the same. You know, and, and the reason I mention that is because, to me, throwing the ball hard and running fast are not quarterback traits that are necessarily at the top of anybody's list. So I know that people talk about Malik Willis that way. His tape in 2021 was not very good, and he ran an offense, which, of course, is not his fault. He's just the quarterback running the offense he's given, but he ran an offense that was very remedial and simplistic relative to what he's going to have to do in the NFL. So he can throw it hard, and he can run fast, and we'll see where his career goes and who drafts him. He's, he's going to need to be – in a really well-coached system that defines things for him really cleanly, certainly early in his career. Um, the other quarterbacks in this draft, I think, all have issues that some can be coached, some can't be coached. I think Sam Howell has very good traits. Um, he will freely admit he did not have a good year in 2021. He will freely admit that he tried to do too much, and therefore he left the pocket way too soon. He, he, he did not want to be in the pocket. He wanted to get out of the pocket. He didn't feel comfortable being there. So now we'll see if that translates or if he calms down and can run an offense because he, he's a good thrower of the football. Uh, he's got a good deep arm. He is mobile. Um, 
Matt Corral, Matt Corral ran an offense again. That he, it was an RPO quick game offense. He can snap the ball off well, particularly in the short to intermediate game. He's got that whip-like delivery, very compact ball comes out. Uh, but that Lane Kiffin offense was quick game RPO and take some deep shots. So, and he ran a lot, and he's not going to be doing that in the NFL. Um, Desmond Ritter, to me, is almost the most fascinating of these guys mm. because he ran – a lot of pro style concepts. He has some issues as well. He's way too deliberate in his drop, and at times with his delivery, it can be a little elongated. He tends at times to drop his arm angle a little bit low, which causes ball placement issues, and he missed far too many layups. But I think in the right kind of offense where the run game is a featured foundation and there's play action, um, I think he can be very effective. And I think that he made some some what we would call NFL throws within the context of the Cincinnati offense. We got Greg Cosell, a few minutes left with the NFL Films senior producer here on the Rich Eisen show, uh, one of the keenest eyes evaluating uh, that uh, we can talk to. So, um, last couple of years, Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase, remarkable rookie seasons yep. at the receiver position. Um, the kid, based on what you've seen of the All 22, that is more. You know, would would have a shot to make it three in a row um, with significant rookie seasons. Would be which receiver? Wow, that's a great question because Chase was a no-brainer. Jefferson was not a no-brainer, by the way, and he's obviously been phenomenal. But he was not a no-brainer. Um, I'm really intrigued with Garrett Wilson. He kind of reminds me a little bit of Stephon Diggs in the way in which he plays, and I think that's obviously a pretty good comparison. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think of all the other receivers in this draft right now. I've seen the receivers probably the position I've watched the most players. So there's so many guys. Yeah, there really are. They were they were they lit up. They lit up uh, Lucas Oil. The combine. I mean, well, you know, it's funny. Just to respond to that point, I think you're going to see now going forward because of sports science and advanced technology and training, we're going to see just unbelievable performances. I mean, being there on the Saturday night watching the D line and linebackers sitting in the dome, I mean, these guys, the athleticism is off the charts. And it's only going to continue to get better and better because of the nature of training. Um, but uh, as far as receivers, um, uh, Traylon Burks fascinates me because he's a big man who moves well. Regardless of his 40 time, he plays much faster. He's got really big hands. He catches everything. I think you can move him around quite a bit. I think there's a little bit of Debo Samuel to him in the fact that you can line him up all over, including the backfield. Um, of course, you know some might see that more as a negative than a positive because uh, there's a Debo Samuel, but there's also a, a LaVisca Chenault, who some thought could be that guy and hasn't turned out to be that guy up to this point um but burks really fascinates me before i let you go greg cosell i'm going to ask you a sports talk radio question i'm giving that here we go okay i'm gonna uh, here we go here we go at least i walked through the front door here all right all right yeah (laughs) okay i'm going to give you four acquisitions from this the march was insane as you know in the nfl okay i'm going to give you four acquisitions and let's use your matchup brain your scheme fit brain here and you tell me which is going to be the most significant in terms of uh positive results this fall okay okay i need i need the most right i mean all four of them are all four of them are going to be significant but that's what the sports talk radio can only choose one all right, which one is going to be the most significant this fall, wind up being the most significant? The acquisition of Russell Wilson for Nathaniel Hackett, okay? The acquisition of um, Devontae Adams for Derek Carr. The acquisition of Tyreek Hill for Tua and Mike McDaniel. Or the acquisition of Matt Ryan for Frank Reich. I'll give you those four again. Russell Wilson. Got okay, got you got him. Him. okay, you go. I got him. Okay, I got him. which one you yeah. got for me? Which one? I'm going to go Tyree Kill for this reason, because I think Mike McDaniel really understands what Tua is, as most people do. When you talk to coaches at the Combine about Tua, they all understand his limitations and what he has to be in order to be effective. So now you have the RPO game and the quick game throws to two burners in Waddle and Hill who can take short passes and go the distance because that's what their pass game needs to be. And I think that the acquisition of Hill really will impact that significantly because now you can have one guy on each side and that that makes – yeah, you know, two is an RPO quarterback. 
Um, and he can throw the deep ball, but he's not a sit on his back foot and drive the ball in the middle of the field quarterback. So you need the quick game. You need the RPO game. And I think Hill, who ran an RPO game, was part of an RPO game in Kansas City, he can take those quick slants, those glance routes, and he can turn them into much more. See, that was an answer to a sports talk radio question, and we're both surviving it. We both lived. That was great. Well, I, no, Terrific. I mean, I gave you a football answer. You did, which is great. So here's a, it's a, here's a bonus one then. Which oh, one? Boy. Which, oh, here you go. Which and I, and I know that we don't know in the draft because you know I'm assuming both of these teams are going to draft a rookie receiver in the first round. Which one is more of a significant departure that will affect uh, the way that they operate? Hill now no longer being there for Mahomes or Adams for Rodgers. Which one Adams for Rodgers, huh. uh, because that was basically their pass game to a large, large extent. I was almost close to saying Adams to your first question, because I think Devontae Adams is the best wide receiver in the game. Right. And, and so I was very close to that, but I just thought that with the speed and the way, the way they need to sort of orchestrate their pass game, that Hill is really a big factor for Miami. But Adams, to me, has been over the last couple of years the, the most complete wide receiver. You could say Hill's clearly more dynamic and more explosive. That's without question. But I think Adams is the most complete wide receiver over the last couple of years. Yeah, I know. I, I, you, you, right? Green Bay's going to have to get a, a receiver. They're going to the have to round, draft right? a, a receiver you, somewhere along the line. Well, first round, right? I mean, we can't... You we, would think, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, <laughs> You do have to line up with wideouts in this league. I mean, Rodgers will need to get started with the kid. He might actually bring the card up in Vegas and then just take him and go somewhere and start Unless throwing. Unless they're going to go back to the Packer sweep with a seal here and a seal there. Yeah, that's right. That's well done. <laughs> well done, sir. Thank you so much, Greg Cosell. Say hi to everybody uh, in, at Films for me. We'll chat again soon. Greatly right, Rich, appreciate, thanks. It. appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay. Greg Cosell, right there on the Rich Eisen Show. I love talking to him. Makes me smarter. At Greg Cosell on Twitter. I follow him. You should as well. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.